Good morning. Welcome to the Mount St. Mary College uh, webinar today on June 4th. Um, my name is Trisha Guanci Terrian, and I work at the college. I've been at the college for about 20 years. And uh, one of the um, one of the greatest things that I've been part of is the adoption of the Mount St. Mary College alumni into the St. Anselm College Alumni Association. I want to give a big shout out to Walter Gallo and Father Jonathan and so many Mount St. Mary alumni who back in the, the early 2000s, um, we, you know, came to the alumni office and really said, hey, let's, let's bring these women into the alumni association so that we can preserve the history of Mount St. Mary College and also the relationship between both colleges, Mount St. Mary College and St. Anselm. I also would like to recognize Rita Laurian from the class of 1952, who really started uh, on her own um, giving money to the college in, in memory of Mount St. Mary College um, in, in the form of scholarship aid. So, you know, at this time, I just want to mention that the, we became the Mount St. Mary College alumni officially became adopted into the St. Anselm College alumni as associate members back in uh, 2007. And in 2012, many Mount St. Mary College came together to form an endowed scholarship. So with that note, I'd like to introduce um, Martha Muldoon from the class of 1966, a Mountie and really someone that has helped us throughout these years with her leadership and her passion. Um, Martha is gonna say a few words about Sister Amy Hoey and she's gonna remember the deceased members of the Mount St. Mary College alumni um, since our last meeting, which was June in 2019. Thank you, Martha. You're welcome, you're welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and it has really been a joy working with um, St. A's and uh, Tricia and the whole crowd there, you know, uh, Peter and so forth, um, and Walter. Um, who I call the godfather of, of, of this uh, effort that we're, we're in. Um, as she mentioned, we found this endowment and um, it was, we told everyone they didn't have to give right now because endowments very often come by way of bequests. And at that time we said, if there's a will, we want to be in it. And, you know, we haven't had to <laughs> get much money that way, but we have had some very generous people. Um, right now, I'd like to read the list of those who died this, um, this past year, uh, who were alumni of Mount St. Mary College. And I'm leading it off with uh, actually a dear friend of mine, um, Bernie Lyons White, who, um, who died this past year. And others that died were Connie O'Connell Crosby, Lillian Jacobs, class of 52, Carolyn Kelleher, Buckland, class of 65. She and I were in um, Seven Nuns in Las Vegas together. Um, uh, Mary, Shay, Emery, 51. Dorothy, Saltzgiver, Gunther, 51. Mary Jane Derby, who was in my class and distinguished herself by working in the Kennedy compound in their um, kitchen because she was a home ec major one summer and would tell us nothing. Anyway, uh, Kristen Colleton of class of 52, Ann Vaccaris, to sister Ann Vaccaris of uh, 55, Josephine Kelly Moriarty, uh, sister Amy, I'll talk about her in a minute, Annette Fulham Clutter, I worked with her on um, the murder in a cathedral that we actually did at St. Paul's Cathedral in downtown Manchester with the uh, with St. Ace. Um, Virginia Noyes Holbrook, Catherine Coalition, yes, uh, Rita Meyer Ryberry, and Claire Kylie Chauvin. I would like to say a couple of words about Sister Amy, who was absolutely dear to all of us. Um, she was most encouraging in putting together the endowment, but then she would come to the, the brunches and regale us with stories. And she was, without a doubt, one of the guiding lights along with Sister Biani of the Mount when I went there, which was 
62 through 66. Um, she obviously was a highly, highly qualified individual. She had a fabulous sense of humor. And I was just doing the arithmetic and realized that she was about in her 30s, early 30s, when she was at the Mount with us. And we all considered her old and she was probably about 10 years older than we were, if that, if that. Um, so her death was, um, for me, very, very difficult because she has been so much a part of my life just in the last 20 years. And I remember very much the, uh, the dedication of our uh, Mount St. Mary College plaque um, that's a, a highway plaque um, in front of the mountain. And she spoke at that time as well. Um, so I, I can't tell you how appreciative all of us were of being under her care and taking her classes in English. She was just a gem. Um, so um, let me finish with that. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. And certainly I, I didn't know um, Sister Amy as well as you, but she, she was so supportive um, and really enthusiastic about um, every event that we did at the college. And she, I think she attended every one in her lifetime. So mm -hmm. um, thank you for those words of memory for her. At this time, I'm gonna introduce um, Peter LeBombard. Peter is the, um, many of you have met Peter over the years because he loves to attend our events as well. Um, Peter is one of my colleagues and he's the Senior Director of Plan Giving at St. Anselm College. Um, he's an experienced plan giving executive with extensive knowledge in higher education, fundraising and wealth management. He works closely with many St. Anselm alumni and Mount St. Mary College alumni with their estate and retirement planning. And he is passionate about preserving the history and the mission of Mount St. Mary College. Through these events, gatherings, hopefully future gatherings soon, um, and with the continued growth of the endowed scholarship. Peter will now give an update on the scholarship and how it's impacted some female students over the last few years. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Trish, and, and thank you, everyone. Uh, such a pleasure to be here today. Uh, one of, in the eight years I've been here at St. Anselm College, one of the real joys has been getting to know the Mount St. Mary alumni. Uh, my dear friend, Rita Lorian has been, has been so generous and so giving with her time and, and support over these, these years. Uh, Martha has been wonderful, Ann Lamb, others that were really instrumental in making this, this effort the way it is. Uh, the Mount St. Mary Endowed Scholarship supports women who have social justice or social work or community care uh, work in their resume and in their future. Uh, let me read briefly the, the, the blurb so on that when we established, when this was established uh, back 15 years ago, uh, the Mount St. Mary College Endowed Scholarship Fund honors and commemorates the Mount as well as its historical association with St. Anselm College. It has created a permanent scholarship for a female student with financial need, academic aptitude, leadership potential, and in honor of founder Catherine McCauley, experience serving those in need. All those who donated $100 or more back in 2012 were recognized as charter members of the fund and members of the Sister Mary Vianney Fulham RSM Society in honor of Sister Vianney for her many years of committed service and leadership at the Mount. This scholarship fund has grown marvelously over the past 10, 15 years because of all of your generosity. Um, and it has supported, I believe now four, almost five, if we go to next year, young women to get their education here at, at uh, St. Anselm College in the tradition and in memory of Mount St. Mary College. As of December 30th, the last number we have, December 30th, 2020, the fund was worth, believe it or not, $167,000 because of your generosity. And it supported last year, 
Juliana Cole, class of 2022, uh, who will be graduating next year, obviously. She's going to be a rising senior. Uh, she's a social work major from Hopkinton, Mass. I've been told she's a lovely, lovely young woman who really has a passion for helping the community and making the world a better place, which I would expect in that memory of and that tradition of Mount St. Mary College. Uh, the fund, we expect, again, as I said, we'll top, we'll top 200,000 very soon, which would generate over $8,000 a year in, in scholarship support. It's really significant. Uh, last year's appeal, the annual appeal that you all got fairly recently in the mail or by email, uh, raised over $16,000 to add to the fund. And we hope to do even better this year. One way, and Martha was wonderful to mention it, that you can really do something special for this memory, for this, this tradition of your school, is to consider it in your estate planning. Uh, your annual gifts every year are so appreciated and make such a difference. But consider something like a bequest in your will. As Martha said, and I love the phrase, if there's a will, we want to be in it. <laughs> it would really make a huge difference. It's, I, I love that phrase. Uh, Dr. DeSalvo, our former president, used that in his inauguration address as well. Um, but <laughs> bequests, uh, charitable gift annuities or trusts, I can help you create those that would benefit the Mount St. Mary Scholarship. Uh, just as a quick uh, example, we have a couple. She's a Mount St. Mary's graduate. He's a St. Anselm graduate, elderly in their 80s now or the late 70s, 80s. Uh, they created a $100,000 gift annuity uh, five years ago now. It pays them 6.5% a year. So they get $6,500 a year from this annuity, most of that being tax-free income to them. When they both pass away, what's left of the $100,000 will come into the Mount St. Mary Scholarship and make a really significant difference in the amount of effort, the amount of assistance it can provide to, to a deserving female student here at St. Anson College. I have other examples like that. I'd love to talk to each of you about what you might be able to envision as your legacy uh, in memory, in honor of the wonderful education that you received at the Mount and the wonderful education that young women receive today here in the Hilltop at St. Anselm College. So thank you, please be in touch if I can help in any way. And I'll turn it back over to my dear colleague, Tricia. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. It's now my pleasure to introduce, am I on there? Sorry. Yes. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Keith Chevalier. Um, if you have any questions throughout the, the presentation, you're welcome to put them in the, the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, um, and I will um, help get those to Keith. Um, if you have any questions for Peter as well, you can put them in there and we can address those at the end if we have some time. And if not, I know Peter will um, we'll probably send out the recording of this as well as um, contact information for everybody. Keith Chevalier is the archivist and head of special collections um, in, in the Geisel Library at St. Anselm College. He manages the archives for the college and the Benedictine Monastery. In addition, he curates four rare book and manuscript collections, the New England Collection, the Rare Book Collection, the Franco-American Collections, and he serves as the bibliographer for the O'Rourke St. Anselm College Collection um, in which supports the Institute of St. Anselm Studies. He's a member of the Society of American Archivists and serves on this, their standards committee and is involved with the New England Archivists. He received his training in libraries and archives at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And um, Keith, you have quite a resume, a book design and production for rare, the Rare Book School at the University of Virginia. It's always a pleasure to work with Keith. I love his passion for history, for archives, and he's really taken a special interest in archiving the unique relationship between Mount St. Mary College and St. Anselm College. And with that note, if you have anything that you would like to donate to the archives, a yearbook, old photos, anything that can really capture Mount St. Mary College, as well as the relationship between Mount St. Mary College and St. Anselm College, I know Keith would welcome those documents and those photos, yearbooks, 
and certainly you can you can work with Martha or myself um, to get those to the college. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Keith Chevalier. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Tricia, for those kind words. Um, uh, just want to say that it's an honor for me to uh, give this presentation. I've, I've done it once before in person, and um, I hopefully, uh, with the presentation that I have today, um, I can show the connection, the association between uh, the two colleges, St. A's and uh, the, the Mount, and um, you know maybe tell the story and the few items that we have at the college uh, of the history of the uh, that connection. Uh, share my screen. Uh, so we have very few things, and I appreciate um, Tricia uh, asking or putting the call out for materials that maybe document the, the story or the history of the Mount, as well as that connection, uh, those connections that uh, have existed and still exist today uh, between uh, the alumni and um, uh, St. Aslam College. So my, my story here, my, my presentation will really kind of touch on Briefly, the, the history of, of the Mount uh, as, as we have a representative materials in the archives here, as well as the connections between uh, the two schools. And really to tell the story of uh, Mount St. Uh, Mary College, we have to go back to the, the founding uh, and the, the establishment of the, uh, um, the Sisters of Mercy in, in Manchester in the 1850s. Uh, with uh, Mother uh, Frances uh, Ward. Sister Ward was, uh, 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 came from Ireland and um, her mission to establish schools and uh, various uh, apostolates to the mission of uh, the Sisters of Mercy uh, was strong. And you know, she came up here in 1858 uh, to what was then the Diocese of Portland uh, at the request um, of uh, the bishop of the time, Bacon, Bishop Bacon. And what she did was uh, she started, she founded a, a school, uh, Mount Saint, what became uh, early on Mount St. Mary's Academy uh, in the late 1850s, as well as a hospital, Sacred Heart uh, Hospital. Um, she also helped found elderly homes for women and men, uh, an orphanage, maternity hospital, like I said, um, uh, infant asylum, as well as uh, residents for working women, uh, the single women that were working in the, uh, the mills in the city. The sisters were known for their charity work, as well as their uh, attention to the uh, education of young people. Um, their apostolate uh, was strong along those lines. Uh, these are photographs of two paintings that uh, Father Raphael Fisterer, one of the resident artist monks uh, here in the early uh, 20th century painted, really showing this, this bookend of life, uh, orphanage and uh, 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 school uh, attention to that for the sisters on the left and on the right, we have them care, caring for the sick, the elderly, uh, those, in, 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 in hospital. Uh, an interesting connection to, to, to the Benedictines, the um, uh, Benedictines of St. Anselm Abbey, is that in 1928, a year after the Abbey was founded, the sisters took over the educational program at St. Raphael's School. Uh, St. Raphael's School being attached to uh, St. Raphael's Parish, which was founded by the Benedictines of St. Anselm Abbey and is still administered by them. Uh, this is an ad advertisement from the Magnificat uh, magazine, a magazine that was established by the Sisters of Mercy in 1907 after the diocesan uh, magazine, the Gideon, uh, went out of business. Um, it, it didn't pick up so much in describing or um, talking about diocesan affairs. And instead, it actually was a literary magazine that uh, afforded uh, the young women in Mount St. Mary's Academy in the city uh, of Manchester uh, opportunity to, to, to publish their, their writings, and of course, other writings, and it's meant for a national audience. Um, this is an advertisement showing uh, in 1918, the three major um, 
educational uh, uh, programs that the Sisters of Mercy had. The top is Mount St. Mary's Seminary, which is in Hookset or was in Hookset. Uh, it becomes Mount St. Mary's College. Our Lady of Grace Vocational School in the middle there is really a, a concerted effort by the Sisters of Mercy to um, uh, afford the opportunity of an education to women uh, looking to um, better themselves. Our Lady of Grace Vocational School was founded in 1915 and it changed its name to Our Lady of Grace uh, Academy in 1922 when it took on more of a, a standard high school classical course curriculum, but it still had those vocational um, aspects to its curriculum. It's majority, uh, for, for, for a while, the majority of students in that Our Lady of Grace school were nurses um, and nursing education was different. So you could you know, work as a nurse, but not be what we would consider, you know, as quali you know, the qualifications that are demanded of nurses today. Um, those, those wouldn't have been present back then. So the school kind of functioned as a, a way for nurses to, to, to get more professional credentials for uh, their profession. And the, really the interesting thing there is that uh, a nurse who later becomes a director of a more general hospital, Mary Durning Davis, uh, really propositions, I asked the sisters to do this uh, and have this relationship so that she could have um, this, this, this more professionally trained uh, um, uh, young women in the nursing program uh, that are up to date with the modern you know, uh, or contemporary at the time um, uh, standards of you know, science and et cetera. And uh, the interesting thing is too that uh, this Mary Durning Davis advocates later in the 1940s uh, for the for St. Anselm College to be de begin doing uh, something like that uh, in the hospitals, which then later on in the 1950s, early 50s, you know, develops into the nursing program that we still have today. Uh, so the uh, Mount St. Mary Seminary, uh, this is an interesting, this is um, from the previous slide, uh, you know, interesting and, and you know, fairly well written um, uh, description of the seminary as it stood. Uh, so, you know, it stands at the center of magnificent estate on some 300 acres high in the hills overlooking the beautiful Merrimack Valley. You know, it hooks at it, you know, where it's at, you know, where it's, it's high up on the hill. It's hooks at heights, it's away from the city. Uh, it says, you know, under this, its roof, a skilled architect has assembled all the best achievements of modern science, et cetera. So, you know, really having this, uh, this interesting uh, and, 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 and great location away from the city to, 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 to educate young women. Uh, the estate that it's on was purchased, uh, I believe in 1905 uh, by the Sisters of Mercy and it was 300 acres along with a you know, house, the, the Galt Estate Mansion or a house or whatever you wanna call it, which still stands today. Um, the bank, they, they, they took out a bank loan, the sisters did, as well as um, uh, uh, futures on the, 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 the lumber or the, the trees on, on location there to be harvested for lumber. Um, and you know, the, the, that's how they were able to acquire the estate. Um, the designs were submitted uh, by architect for the building in 1906 construction begins. 1909, the building is completed. Uh, May of that year, the Alumni Association, the Mount St. Mary Alum Alumni Association meets. So the first event in the building is actually an alumni reunion. Um, and um, in fall of that year of 1909, uh, we have uh, the first 85 students living and or, or commuting to that school. Um, later, the, the, the notion of the seminary breaks in 1949, where the, the, the building, the school is solely in Hookset as a college, and more of the, um, the academic or the, um, the high school program moves down to Nashua. Um, an interesting thing that develops in the early 1930s is this kind of collaborative um, uh, project between the Benedictine monks who were the faculty at St. Anselm College 
and the sisters teaching at uh, the Sisters of Mercy teaching at um, uh, Our Lady of Grace Academy in the city. And um, really what the proposition was that the college would sponsor uh, uh, degrees issued through Our Lady of Grace College. And um, many of the women attending this affiliate program with St. Anselm College uh, were from Manchester, um, were primarily religious, and were all teaching in uh, religious schools. So kind of an attempt to uh, standardize and professionalize the teaching core of uh, the uh, area um, Catholic schools. Uh, the curriculum led to a Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, classes were taught in ethics, English, French, Latin, biology, uh, kind of standard um, courses. Uh, this is a transcript header, so showing really a transcript of someone graduating from Our Lady of Grace College. It, it shows that it, the college was affiliated through St. Anselm College. Um, the faculty in the college included the Sisters of Mercy, as well as uh, Benedictine uh, uh, monks like Abbot Bertrand Dolan, Father Placidus Shorn, and um, Father Eugene Gellner. Uh, here is a slide from a uh, course or the college catalogs, St. Anselm catalogs uh, from 1930 and 32. You can see in 1930, we already are listing these women stu uh, students. You can see the majority of them have uh, either sister or mother and then their, um, their orders, uh, initials after their names. Um, this, the, the women didn't attend classes on campus. Instead, the, the faculty would come to uh, the building uh, in Manchester and teach. Um, and in total, uh, it, there are about 10 degrees that I've been able to actually find that were issued through this affiliate program. And on the right here, I have a, a, a image from the 1932 commencement um, listing. And you can see that there's sister uh, Camilla Dowd, um, uh, Anna Doyle, Madeleine Lassade, um, and Sister Paul Ward. So we have like this listing even in, in print showing that like while St. Anselm College was an all male school, we are having kind of this affiliate program to, to, to recognize that um, there, there were um, women coming through and getting a, a degree, albeit through an affiliate program here. Uh, so this arrangement lasted until 1934 when Bishop John uh, Peterson, who uh, was, you know, had been in office for a couple of years um, uh, following the death of the former bishop, Bishop uh, Gerton, um, he, he, he really was an advocate for education and he didn't really, it doesn't seem like through the papers, through the archives, that he was particularly fond of this arrangement. He wanted the, the young women to have a school of their own. He didn't want the Benedictine monks to you know, do this kind of teaching, uh, you know, kind of mixing up their, their academic work. So uh, what happened is in 1934, uh, the bishop appealed to the, the state legislature and you know, uh, was uh, given a charter for uh, Mount St. Mary's College um, it was favorably received in the, uh, the media, which at the time would have been the newspaper, the Union Leader, and um, the college opened in September 10th of uh, that year, 1934. And uh, at the end of the academic year, so in June of 1935, the first commencement was held. Now, since there was already a Mount Our, Our Lady of Grace College, there were already students enrolled and at Mount St. Mary's uh, College in Hookset that would have already have had taken courses, um, college courses. So really there were three graduates of already in the first year uh, from, the, from the college and um, uh, their names are Rita Gerten, uh, uh, Gerten uh, was known as Sister Marie George Gerten. She's you know, sister of um, uh, the former Bishop, uh, Juliette Labelle and Kathleen Smith. Uh, one of the things I think Martha alluded to before was the, the, the idea of the, um, uh, the, sh the, the performing in theatrical uh, plays and the like. 
And really the, the, the connection between the student uh, groups uh, began in the 1930s where the dramatic societies at both schools uh, work together to put on plays at both of the schools and kind of tour those between the, the campuses. And that's important to think of, it's, it, it's important to think of like how plays would have been performed before that. Um, all male school, all female school roles in, at the all male school for uh, women were performed by men, all uh, male uh, uh, leads in that were performed by women at the Mount. So like putting these together kind of made sense and um, it really increased the, the connective tissue between the, the two schools and uh, were quite, quite popular entertainment. Um, after World War II, uh, the, the, the schools began working together along those lines and incorporated Riviere College in Nashua to create this thing called the Little Theater League. And here's a photograph from the first meeting of, of that league. And we can see, you know, there's, there's, there's men from the St. Anselm College and women from both uh, Mount St. Mary's as well as uh, Riviere. And uh, it's really a development that um, uh, uh, leads to a, a lot of interaction between uh, the schools, the, the young men and young women. Um, and this, this, this relationship lasts actually through the um, incorporation of women into the nursing department uh, uh, program at the college here in the 1950s. We still see um, shared casts and, and working together cooperatively along this, this artistic, um, uh, this artistic endeavor. Of course, uh, you know, a lot of things that uh, us, you know, myself, as well as those in alumni affairs and advancement here are the relationships that were built and the families that were uh, put together because of um, these, these things such as the, um, uh, the collaborative work in the theatrical arts, as well as just general socials. So this is from 1948, February 20th, just a recounting of a dance at the college that the women of Mount St. Mary's were invited to. And we see this kind of, you know, give and take. And, 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 and at least in the one, the one uh, yearbook I have, which I think is from 1956, you know, the class history recounts these details of the, the entertainment and the, the looking forward to these dances with the young men at um, the college here. And here again, there's just another thing of uh, the collegial nature of bringing the two campuses together for dances and the like. One thing that some people might not be aware of is that we share a architect. Uh, T. Edward Sheehan uh, designed the building at Mount St. Mary's College, then Mount St. Mary's Academy uh, in, in 1907, uh, 1906, um, and, and, and built that. But he also, for St. Anselm College, on the right, uh, he designed the North Wing, which was, um, and, and um, that's the one with the tower and the building on the right side of the tower. Uh, that projects uh, backwards from the front. Um, that was built in 1911 or completed in 1911. And if you take a look at the buildings, at least the, the, the Mount St. Mary's College building and um, St. Anselm College's North Wing, you can see some like design details at least. They're like, okay, this kind of makes sense. If you walk around the buildings, you could probably you know, a building tour between the two, you could really see the similarities in, in design. But I think the simplest uh, thing to make note are the gables. Um, so we have, you know, kind of a step gable in the facade, the front of uh, the college building in Hookset, as well as on the tower, uh, on the, um, the bell tower. And, you know, this kind of invokes this, this, this Dutch um, uh, canal, building design um, and, and, it, and it's a nice, interesting thing uh, to see. The, the college building here um, was initially designed, uh, the designs from Sheehan Architects were to have uh, two bell towers, kind of a, a symmetrical uh, addition to, to the building, but that, that never um, took off. 
And um, you know, this is our two paintings uh, celebrating graduations of the two colleges. Uh, on the left, we have Mount St. Mary's, which when this was uh, painted by Father uh, Raphael, uh, this would have been 1916. This would have been the Mount St. Mary's Academy. And then, you know, on the right, you know, Father Raphael's um, painting St. Anselm graduate. Of course, there's, there's, both of these paintings are, are full of, you know, meaning and, you know, symbolism and that. And I'm not really sure if either one of them, either one of them exists today. So the the photographs that Father Raphael took of his work might be the sole survivors of, of the um, of his of his work here. But it's an attempt to really kind of do a complementary thing. Like before, I showed the the two paintings of the sisters, you know, involved in kind of the bookends of life from ch childhood to 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 to, to um, hospice type care. And here we have like two two graduates. So I think it's kind of a nice little. Uh, connection between the two that Father Raphael uh, put together. Um, so the last thing I want to show today is uh, actually uh, something that came about when a colleague and my uh, uh, and myself went down to Boston Public Library, and we were looking for the drawings for a chapel, uh, the chapel building uh, here at the college, and um, in the interactions with the librarians and archivists in the art. Um, archives at Boston Public Library. Uh, you know, the, the terms that we were looking for, these things weren't that well cataloged. One of them was just like St. Mary's, you know, the, the monks here at the college trace their, 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 their monastery and, and the school here is because of the founding uh, members from um, St. Mary's uh, Abbey in Newark, New Jersey. So St. Mary's was just one of the things. And since St. Mary's came up on, on the list and New Hampshire came up on the list of this. This uh, we were provided with some drawings that show this really interesting proposition for a chapel at uh, Mount St. Mary's Academy. So, the chapel uh, at that first uh, alumni reunion uh, on the grounds in Hookset, uh, a chapel fund was established. You know, a chapel doesn't you know uh, get get built for you know decades after that. But um, so, so they must have had funds enough in 1931, 1932 to be able to commission uh, the McGinnis and Walsh um, architecture firm in Boston to, to draw up these plans. And these plans are really interesting because they show an architecture of a building that if you went to Boston College campus, you would see, you see buildings like this. There's really, they're Gothic, they're stone structures, you know, really well built. Um, very practical in the sense of you know church church architecture and symbolism, and, and and just coming across these was kind of a revelation because I never had seen this mentioned in any which way, uh, and it's quite interesting. But the the building itself, you know, this foundation uh, and self elevation uh, plan, you know, shows a very large structure, uh, one that you know is over 160 uh, feet long. Um, and, and and you know really something that I think if it would have been built, it would be one of these uh, signposts for architectural historians to come through the state and make sure that they check off going to the Mounts um, Chapel. And you know the detail work is really exquisite and really interesting. And it, I, we were shown this at the last minute, and the, the library was closing, and so we didn't really have time to to really spend uh, uh, enough. Uh, on this to 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 get more information about why it was done and why it was planned this way, but it was just kind of an interesting um, set of circumstances that led to this uh, discovery and uh, quite quite interesting for me because um, I think the building Mount St. Mary's College's building is quite quite interesting to begin with, and I know it's transitioned to uh, condominiums and the like, but it's it's still a really great. Um, possible what if, if this would have been built. Uh, so that is uh, my uh, presentation. And um, I think if we've had questions, I could try answering them. Uh, we do, we have a few questions, Keith, thank you. And we have um, anyone else who have, might have a question, feel free to type it in the Q&A or chat area. Um, 
We did have a question from Tracy Kennison. I know there's some St. Anselm College alumni that are on uh, the webinar as well, who have, I am sure have relationships with either their parents or a relative um, went to the Mount, Mount St. Mary College. So I know Tracy Kennison, who graduated from St. Anselm in 1986, her mother, Jean LaBelle Kennison, graduated in 1962. And Tracy is wondering um, that she was, you said that you mentioned Juliet LaBelle and she was wondering if her mom might be related to Juliet. So that was some information that maybe we can get back can to Tracy that. on that. I don't yeah, know if you have a thought up. on that or we can uh, we get can back look to it up. Yeah. 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 So let's, we'll get back to you, Tracy, on that. And then a message from um, an alum, um, uh, a Mount St. Mary College alum wondering, when you mentioned academy, um, she thought it was really an, a seminary. I don't know if you wanna speak on that or maybe we can get back to. Uh, well, the, 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 the notion uh, as, it, as it moves or uh, as the academy transitions out to Hookset, they, they rebrand themselves as, I, I believe it was first Mount St. Mary's Seminary and then it turned to Mount St. Mary's Seminary and Academy. You know, okay. so a seminary can be, one where you're teaching, you know, the classical course of, you know, high school, you know, students that, you know, possibly are going to have a vocation in, in the, um, in, in the, uh, in the order. Um, but I think that's, that's, that's what it is. So there's, there's a few name changes through the time, through the years. And I think once after a little bit, that seminary kind of gets and academy. So Simone St. Mary's seminary and academy. Right. I think is what it ends up as, and then the seminary moves down to um, moves to Nashua, New Hampshire. Right, and and um, on a similar note, and I know this this is part of Saint Anselm's history as well. Um, the college used to be called Saint Anselm's College, right. and I believe in the early '80s we changed it to Saint Anselm College. <clears throat> mainly because of the, a lot of people were calling it St. Anselm's and they thought by dropping, I believe this is true, Keith, yeah. um, by dropping the S, it would be easier to say Anselm. So um, I've found in just my limited work with Mount St. Mary College, sometimes it's called Mount St. Mary's College and sometimes it's called Mount St. Mary College. Yeah. So it looks like in a couple of the photos that you showed, it was apostrophe VS and then others, right. it was just um, Mary. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, the college here, you know, it was uh, St. Saint, Saint Anselm's College, uh, St. Anselm's Academy. And so we had a high school and a right. college at yeah. the same time for a long time. So yeah, the, that, that they went back in the 80s, what you're referencing, they went back to the, the charter and that's actually, it's in the, in the charter that says St. Anselm College. It's not the apostrophe, the possessive, so. Okay, I've had two, another two-part question um, from Janet Proctor. I think Janet, class is 63. Thanks for participating, Janet. The architect drawing looks like the front facade of the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in the south end of Boston. Did the architect do that building as well? I think so. I, th I would have to get back on that, but you're right. That, that is a, uh, it's a, there's a look to it. It's a very specific look. And, you know, Sheehan wasn't as, the Sheehan Architects uh, firm wasn't as large as McGinnis and Walsh because once McGinnis and Walsh were able to start planting their buildings on the BC campus, that's when they became very big and very prominent in that. And I think so, but I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't say for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and then Janet had another follow-up that the drawing of the chapel that was found at the Boston Library looks to me like the view of the cathedral, the Holy Cross in the south end of Boston. Yeah, so that oh, has, you know, yeah. there's Gothic, uh, there's Gothic touches to the architecture, right? And it's very like stone-based, I know that, yeah. Um, Mary Lucia from St. Anselm class of 80. I think, I believe that's right, Mary. Um, she's wondering if, if an attendee can discuss its mixers. 
I was at St. A's in the 70s and mixers were not in the distant past at the time. Um, that's a great question. We don't have um, participants able to, to um, talk on this webinar, but it's a good thought. Um, it actually might be a fun topic in the future, Mary. Um, thank you for, for that idea. I love it. Um, and Mary also, she married a St. Anselm alum. Um, I have wondered always why Ma the Mount closed. Did St. Anselm receive more dio diocese support? Likewise, why did it take so long for St. Anselm to help the Mount alumni organizationally, especially with our close history? Keith, do you want to talk about the first? Do you have any information I, on that I, first yeah, part? Yeah, I, I, I can talk about the first. It, there, was a, there was a growing need in the late 60s and very early 70s here at the college to begin looking at um, making the college co-educational, okay? And, and there were, the, it's, as it was relayed to me and what I've seen in you know, some, some records in the archives is that the attempt at um, analyzing the um, effect on uh, Mount St. Mary College on Riviere College and in the city here, Notre Dame College, what would, how, what would the St. Anselm College going fully co-ed do or impact? How would that impact it? You know, and they were able to find that there was very minimal in terms of overlap of curriculum to do that. You know, so I, I can't speak to anything else other than that there, were, there was decision-making, there was dis discussion on this and um, the Bishop Joseph, uh, who was then Abbot Joseph, made the call to say that like we should be inclusive. You know, like we should, the college shouldn't just be, um, you know, uh, for, for men, we should be incorporating women into the fold. And there were women here for a long time, besides the, the women that we we're talking about, I was talking about with the old lady at Grace um, College, I mean, there were there were there were uh, daughters of lay faculty. There were um, uh, nieces of the monks who were here for you know taking classes, and just kind of this gradual momentum to get to get to that point um, with with how uh, the decision making in the monastery was to to incorporate women into the uh, liberal arts curriculum. I, I do know that it took them some time to to look through the data. To evaluate that, um, but that's that's maybe as much as I can say about that. Okay, and th that question came from Kathleen Ebert Zawoski. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, so I guess I could speak a little bit on why did it take us so long. Uh, it's a great question. I believe the I believe Mount Saint Mary College. The last class we have information for is nineteen seventy eight, um, and so. I started at St. Anselm in 2000, in January of 2000. And within a day, Walter Gallo came to my office and said, I have a project for you. We need to, um, so that, that's roughly um, 22 years. Am I getting my data right? Mm -hmm. um, and we really made it a priority because really of the, the Mount St. Mary College alumni that alumni that Walter was able to gather together for those early meetings. Uh, many of you are on this call. Um, so it did take us a little bit of time, um, but quickly after we started meeting, um, you know, myself and Jim Flanagan, Father Jonathan certainly um, worked together with Sister Amy, Sister Joanne, a few other sisters from the Mount um, to try to get as many records as we could. Um, most of the records that we received were um, just maiden names, so we weren't able to really get a good database. So we just started building it, um, you know, through networking. Right now, we have a little over 400 um, Mount St. Mary College alumni in our database, um, but it's really been an opt-in, so it's kind of been word of mouth, and um, certainly the best way to, for us to communicate with you all is through mail, but also through email. Um, and having said that, if you have friends um, that aren't receiving mail from the college, most likely we do not have their information. Um, I know um, Mary Jane Travers is on this call from the class, president from the class of 64. 
and there have been, and Martha included, there have been several presidents from the classes that have done a fantastic job staying in touch with their um, classmates over the years. And they had a good, they had good database for their class. And that was easily transferred over to St. Anselm. And we have been able to support those classes with even, you know, um, just class events. So um, Kathleen, it's a wonderful question. I think you bring up an excellent point. And, you know, I guess going forward, we're gonna just continue to do our best to to support um, the Mount St. Mary College alumni. And please, again, send, um, you know, send the information to your classmates and friends and encourage them to, to reach out. They can simply email alumni at anselm.edu and um, send us their data and we'll, we'll get them on the list. Thank you. Um, uh, we're doing pretty good on time. I have a few more. Um, Mary Lucy, another follow-up question um, that she was looking at a condo um, in the Mount St. Mary College location. And she's wondering if the conversion process was controversial or steps taken to preserve the history of Mount St. Mary College. Do you it, have any info on that, it, Keith? Yeah, it seems like they have. Uh, I was just double checking some things about the uh, building and it did happen upon some, I don't remember what firm helped with redesigning the building to partition it into condominiums, but um, there was care and attention. And there's some, there some blog of a, of a woodworker who helped read, um, stain and work on the doors, the front doors. And, and, and he was very conscientious of the work that he was doing that fit into a, from a preservation point of view, it worked with the aesthetics of, of the building itself, but it does seem like there were, at least in some, you know, discussion from the architect's own site, that there was some conscientious decision making to preserve the feel of the building as it was, because that's probably what I would imagine the draw of you know getting a condominium there would be. It's a beautiful building. Thank you, Keith. Um, Elizabeth McFall, thank you. Um, she's asking if we would be interested in a catalog or two from the early, uh, excuse me, the late sixties and early seventies. These catalogs may set, settle the apostrophe S question. Yes, uh, as, as Trisha mentioned at the beginning at the outset, um, we have very little to, to, to work from and there's, there's not a lot of uh, documentation around um, the sisters have consolidated their homes through the other houses through the years. So I, I think the archives are down in one of the Carolinas now. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, so it's very difficult to kind of work with, with answering some questions or if I just, you know, are, are doing something uh, without having these kind of primary type sources. So yes, if you, if you would be willing to part with that, we will, I will add it to the uh, Mount St. Mary College um, collection. Um, in another question from Christine Stadler from class of 76. Um, Christine is wondering if her mom graduated and her aunts graduated in the 30s and 40s. Do we have information um, on the graduates and the names? Um, Christine, I will, I'm going to send you an answer um, to that question, but feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I can do my best to help you. I know Sister Joanne Bibbo, I can never, I think it's right, Bibbo, um, is working in Wyndham. And I, I can certainly see if she has any of those records. But as Keith mentioned, we may have to go um, to the Sisters of Mercy's archives for that. But let's be in touch with that. Um, Keith, someone, Barbara Reed is wondering, when did St. A's go co-ed? 75? 74. 74. Yeah. The decision was made in 73, the monastic community. And like I said, then Abbot Joseph made the decision to, to go co-ed. So 74 was the first fully co-ed um, class. Thank you. Um, Eileen Brady, thank you for all your comments. Um, she is mentioning that the archives for uh, the Sisters of Mercy and Mount St. Mary College are in Belmont, North Carolina. 
that's good Thank information yeah. to have. <laughs> Can you unmute me? Yeah. Can you unmute me? I think you're unmuted. Oh, good. Um, the library, Hooks at Library, has, um, which is in the, um, where the library was built at the Mount, has some um, archives as well. Um, and one of the things that I had a long conversation one time when I was working and I stopped by to see Sister Amy and Sister Viani, and they had been, you know, really, uh, it was, a, it was a very hard decision to close the school. And what, one of the things that they said about it, and I really took that to heart. Yes, the numbers went down because the baby boom was over by that time. So the numbers of, of people going to college anywhere was going down. But moreover, it was what were the real strengths of Mount St. Mary College? And it was um, to prepare teachers um, and also home economics it was very well known forever uh, for its home ec and dietitians and all that kind of thing. And one of the things that they looked at was how many men would want to really, you know, if they took on men, uh, did, would they want to do that? And it was a very, I want to say, um, tough decision. But if you looked at it, that the school and its strengths weren't necessarily a school that would appeal to men. Just another point of view. That's great, thank you, yeah. All right, can we hang on for a few more minutes, everyone? Um, so lots of good information on here. Um, Elizabeth McF McFall again, um, that she that she said that the graduate transcripts from Mount St. Mary College have been sent to the state of New Hampshire and that she's been able to obtain her transcript there over the years. So that's good information. Yeah. Um, yes, Martha, thank you for the shout out for Ann O'Connell Lamb and uh, Dick Lamb from, I think both, um, Ann graduated in 1961 and Dick graduated from St. Anselm in 1961. They certainly were big advocates in the beginning, for sure. Um, just a few more here. Um, someone uh, is saying that they have a, a yearbook from the class of 34, so hopefully we can, we can get that if they can part with it. I would add that, um, I was able, um, working with uh, Jeannie Gemmel and myself, Jeannie Gemmel, um, Lawson and myself, we were able to actually reach out and touch just about every graduate of the Mount in 1966 by Googling. And that is really, was our first place. And then people know people. And that was the other thing. Um, one of the ways to maybe take a look at this too is that we had many sisters. I mentioned Connie O'Connell, who was um, Ann O'Connell's sister and Dottie O'Connell, who also now has passed. Um, but many sisters went to this school. My sister, Ellen, um, Ellen Muldoon Dugan, also a graduate. In fact, I followed her there. She was a senior and I was a freshman, but there may be a way to do that as well. Thank you, Martha. Um, Janice Kenny Furtado, I think I'm saying that correctly, from the class of 1960. Thanks, Janice, for your co your comment. Um, she's wishing that we there was a newsletter column for the Mount alums, as we have no way of knowing anyone in other classes. Uh, that's a great thought. I think um, we are soon going to announce that um, there will be a page on the St. Anselm College alumni website, there'll be a section for Mount St. Mary College alumni. So um, we hopefully oh, we'll good, have some, good news, good news. Yeah, we'll have some um, in the in the near future, we'll have some more information on that. Thank you, Janice. Um, someone just commented that in 19 in the 1963 yearbook, there isn't um, it's just Mount St. Mary College with no apostrophe s. Um, I don't ever remember it being Mount St. Mary's, which, you know, it just kind of does that thing to your ear. You know what? 
um, it was always Mount St. Mary College or MSMC or the Mount. Okay, I think I got to all the questions, I hope. If not, um, you can reach me at P for Patricia, G-U-A-N-C-I at anselm.edu. Um, I'll send a follow-up email to everybody. Or if it's easier, just send to alumni at anselm.edu. Um, yeah. And we can, um, we can certainly get everybody's information out there. Um, I, a couple of other things came in. Um, just quickly, Keith, um, someone mentioned that sis, they believe Sister George Girton was the niece of Bishop oh, niece, Girton. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did I say sister? <laughs> I think you said sister, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. It is, yeah. Um, and we just, um, we want to remember that Sister Catherine Colliton was the Sister of Mercy who passed away recently. And we, um, someone noted that Sandra Torsi Stewart from the class of 69 also passed away recently. So we remember them both. Um, in addition, if you know of anyone else from your class that has passed, please give us that information as well. We certainly um, would love to update our records. Um, any closing thoughts, Peter or Martha, Keith? I think we're, um... It would be great to think that we're going to be getting together um, in the spring of 22 for a brunch reunion. That would be great. And um, I also would um, thank you so much, Keith, for pulling this together. And don't be surprised if you end up with packages coming at you. Thank you I'm very sure much. I'm you'll welcome that. I will. <laughs> So Let me just, just say some, thank you as well. It's been wonderful, yeah. wonderful summer. So great to see you, Peter. Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you. I hope we'll see you in person this summer. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Just a few closing remarks. Um, as Martha mentioned, if you do have any um, Mount St. Mary mobilia that you'd like to share with um, Keith and the archives, um, you please share it with us. We would. I know Keith will take very good care of it. Um, you know, we mentioned a little bit about the endowed scholarship, how exciting that it's really approaching the $200,000 mark. Um, and I, I know Peter mentioned plan giving and other estate planning that um, you may be interested in. Please reach out to Peter. Having said that, any gift of any size every year is, is so appreciative. Um, so whatever your means are, please participate by making a gift of any size to this endowed scholarship, but really in, in perpetuity, uh, we'll remember um, Mount St. Mary College and the, the good work of the alumni and uh, the alumni and the Sisters of Mercy as well and the mission of that wonderful college. Um, and let, we'll be in touch with future events. We'll give you updates on the new Mount St. Mary College webpage. Um, and I wish you all a wonderful summer and uh, stay healthy and well. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tricia. Take good care. Thank you, Keith and everyone.